Hello everyone. My name is Still Satya and today in this video we are going to talk about torque, angular momentum and even a little about moment of inertia. Let us begin by talking about torque. Torque is a type of force that causes an angular displacement. S that is, uh, it causes a change in angular acceleration. Similar to how force, the linear force, causes change in linear acceleration. So this causes an angular displacement and this causes a linear displacement. So as said in a previous video, uh, torque is defined as moment of force and moment of represents vector r and its cross product with the value which is f. So we know that the cross product of two vectors results in a vector uh, of, uh, of direction perpendicular to that of these two. Mm, so if this were i cap and this were j cap, then this would be k cap. So torque is in a direction perpendicular to both the radius vector and the force vector. So this is not just perpendicular, but also its direction can be found using the right hand thumb rule. That is, if uh, this is your thumb and these are your fingers, then if you curl those fingers in the direction of force uh, while you're keeping your palm in the direction of radius and you're curling it in the direction of force, then the thumb points towards the uh, direction of torque. So in this case, imagine, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll redraw the figure below this. So if this were the disc and uh, this was the radius vector, it's pointed in this direction and this is the force vector. Uh, so the direction of these two are so. Uh, so we are supposed to place our palms in this direction and we're supposed to curl it in this direction. So what we get is a thumb which points towards us. So as I've told you, this dot and a circle means it uh, the line is perpendicular to the screen and coming towards you. So the direction of torque in this case is this. It's coming towards you. And uh, if the force were in this direction, while well the radius was so, then the torque would be inwards. So it would be away from you. So the significance of this direction of the torque is similar to that in the case of other vectors. Uh, it's the direction exists so that it is easier for us to make sense of what will happen if several different torques are acting on the same object in different directions, along different directions. So for example, uh, if this is if this is the body, and uh, if there's a torque, uh, okay, if there's a force here, and if there's a force here, then this is the radius vector, it is in this direction, and this is the radius vector, this is along this direction. These two are opposite, like th this radius vector is opposite in direction to this radius vector, though their magnitudes are the same. But the forces are in the same direction. So F and F. So torque one, okay, let this be R1 and let this be R2, where R2 equals minus R1. So torque one is equal to uh, R1 cross F1. And uh, oh, since they are, uh, these two forces are equal in magnitude, uh, t uh, T2 will be equal to R2 cross F1. Now, R2, as we know, is minus R1. So this will be equal to minus R1 cross F1. So from this, we can see that T2 is opposite in direction to T1, which basically means that we cannot add them directly. I mean, w if we add them, we, ha we will have to subtract them. So th this, and practically we know that if we uh, do this to an actual disk, it will not turn. So like uh, if we add tau 1 plus tau 2, 
which will be the net effect of both these, we will get zero because it's R1 cross F1 minus R1 cross F1, which is zero. And in real life, that is what happens. See how with this we are only getting to know that there is no uh, angular displacement caused. We know that if we apply forces on this, it could be moving like this. But we will not get to know about that using just torque. This is basically the reason why torque and force are two different things. Torque is dependent on both the force and the uh, relative position of point of application of force with respect to the, the axis of rotation. But force, it, it, it's, it's independent of torque. So this is mainly the reason why the direction of torque exists. So as it was previously discussed, torque is nothing but the rotational analog of force. It's the moment of force and it is the rotational equivalent or analog of force. And uh, because of that, we said that, uh, you know, the linear, uh, the equations for linear motion um, and uh, Newton's second law, like F is equal to MA or uh, um, rate of change of momentum is valid even in this analogous case. So that basically means that torque is the rate of change of a particular value, the rotational analog of momentum. Let us talk about this rotational analog of momentum or the uh, angular momentum. So till now, we know three relations involving angular momentum. One is torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum. Uh, the second is that angular momentum is equal to, uh, similar to how linear momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Angular momentum is equal to the rotational analog of mass, I, times rotational analog of velocity, which is omega. Uh, let us not talk about this equation for now because it involves this strange, mysterious concept of moment of inertia, I. Uh, let us talk about the remaining equations. And the third equation was that, it's, it's not an equation, it's just something that stated that uh, angular momentum is the rotational analog of linear momentum. Now, this is very important because this means we can apply most of the concepts that we, uh, that we need linear momentum for. Um, this m uh, might ring a bell since you might know the, uh, the relation between kinetic energy and uh, uh, momentum. But uh, yeah, we will get into that later. But what this relation mainly means is that angular momentum is, as previous previously stated, the moment of momentum. This is the equation. Uh, so this basically means that similar to how torque was a type of force, uh, angular momentum is also a type of momentum. So it is the it is let's say a momentum the the momentum of this body is in this direction, meaning the body tends to move towards this direction. And uh, I mean, at this instant of time, it tries to move here, but since the path is this, it tries to move along this direction. Uh, and the radius vector is along uh, in this direction. And the radius vector is uh, along this direction. So basically, again, sim uh, using the right hand rule, we see that radius curl it towards the momentum and you see that the angular momentum is also towards you, the viewer of the video. Now the really interesting thing in this is that even if you didn't know the relation between torque and angular momentum, you could simply derive it by finding rate of change of angular momentum. So you just have to find the RHS and you will automatically get this. So let's use this relation for that. So rate of change of angular momentum is the rate of change of 
vector r cross vector p and by the product rule of differentiation this is nothing but vector r cross uh, vector p dot now d by dt can also be referred to as a dot on top of the variable so i'm going to use that ref uh, use that symbol plus r dot p using product rule now and yeah this should be the cross product so here let's try to relate these terms now this is vector r cross p dot which is rate of change of linear momentum which is as you know force and r r vector r dot and that is as we know linear velocity so if uh, this is the is vector this is vector r and it's changing in this direction so that is uh, the rate of change of vector r will be in this direction and we know that momentum is also in that direction you can uh, look at this dynamically or you can substitute the value for momentum sorry the vector um, so we know that r dot cross uh, and momentum is mass times velocity and we know that r dot is velocity so the rate of change of position is velocity so uh, since cross product involves sine theta that is the angle uh, the sine of the angle between the two vectors it means if the angle is zero degrees the value becomes zero so in the case of r cross f we do not get a zero since r is in this direction and f is along this direction any direction basically but generally tangential um, plus uh, r dot velocity uh, cross mass into velocity and since these two are the s al along the same direction this term tends towards zero uh, this term is zero sorry it doesn't tend towards zero it is zero and therefore the answer the, uh, the rate of change of angular momentum is nothing but vector r cross vector f which is nothing but the moment of force which is torque now it is important for us to analyze the case of when the external torque the net external torque is zero because it means that the body has uh, nothing that changes its state of rotational motion so the, uh, let me go to a new page here so if we consider torque the net external torque to be equal to zero for this circular body so there can be many torques acting on it or there can be no torque acting on it Th these are the forces the torque will be al 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 either towards us or away from us but these are the forces acting on the body al uh, with respect to different uh, radii i'm sorry not radii uh, distance of separation from the axis of rotation um, let's uh, let's an analyze this case so if net external torque is zero that means that the rate of change of angular momentum is zero and we know that if the differential of a value is zero it means that this value is constant so if the net external torque is zero that means angular moment is constant which means that the moment of momentum as we saw in the previous page is constant so if the product of two values is going to be a constant that means that the two these two values are inversely proportional to each other and uh, uh, since r is equal to c by p and p is equal to c by r and this is actually extremely helpful in uh, analyzing some cases where angular momentum comes into play with net zero external torque let us look at some of the examples which uh, have an application an application of this relation this is called the hoberman sphere and this is an example of conservation of angular momentum in terms of uh, vector r cross vector p so if this is the 
initial radius then we can see that it rotated pretty slowly when this was the radius so that uh, that is so it initially had an angular momentum whose uh, uh, magnitude was vector r cross vector p and since there is no external torque it, it there's nothing that is pushing it to spin or to stop spinning this is only causing it to reduce in size or increase in size so in uh, in that case the angular momentum that it had when it was large is sh it has to be conserved when it sh shrinks right so when it shrinks the radius reduces which means that in order for it to maintain the same angular momentum its linear momentum should increase since angular momentum is r cross um, a, a linear momentum so if the linear momentum increases the angular velocity will increase so that is what we can see here a similar phenomenon can also be observed in the case of ice skaters so if this is the skater they initially start spinning with their arms or legs out open and uh, they have an initial angular velocity and an initial angular momentum um, now after they start spinning they close their arms and legs or they lift it up so in this case what they are doing is they are effectively reducing this initial radius while uh, so if we consider that the friction between their legs and the ground and everything and uh, all other possible reasons for the external torque to have a value uh, to be negligible then in that case the external torque will be almost zero and uh, if that is the case then the angular momentum will be conserved mostly and uh, so if if r reduces then the linear momentum which causes it to uh, which is the tangential cause for the spin will increase in order to maintain the angular momentum meaning they will spin faster there is also one more way to look at this in terms of i and omega which is much more direct but uh, we will look at it a little later because we we will need to discuss the uh, the meaning of i so w why don't we start with what i is once again so i is known as moment of inertia so we know that mass is a measure of inertia of a system uh, towards change in linear acceleration now we found out that i is the rotational analog of mass which is uh, which is kind of a measure of inertia towards change in angular acceleration so mass resists change in linear momentum and uh, moment of inertia tries to resist change in angular momentum in the next video we will be trying to understand what moment of inertia is and we will also try to derive the values of the moments of inertia of a few regular bodies. See you there.